If you're feeling burnt out at work, you're not alone. According to a recent report, 59% of American workers experienced at least moderate levels of burnout in 2022. Now that's up from 2021 and on par with stress levels reported in 2020 during the height of the pandemic. Joining us live to discuss some ways to fight worker burnout is psychiatrist Dr. Ricardo White. Dr. White, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Hello, Irene. It's good to be with you again. Well, the big question here is why? Why are we seeing uh, these big uh, rises in high levels of burnout? What, why does it appear to be a growing trend here? Well, I, I think as we look to emerging from the pandemic, we're seeing a workforce that has been strained. Ultimately, when we talk about burnout, we're talking about resources being overwhelmed by the demand. And can, can you identify with a sense of overwhelm or what? Um, so, so you definitely see the, the workforce under a lot of strain. Uh, the father of burnout is a guy by the name of uh, Dr. Herbert Herdenberger. I'm not going to pronounce the name really well right now. Um, but he actually noticed, he started his research looking at healthcare workers, actually. And what we're seeing is in healthcare workers in particular, you're seeing their rate of burnout even higher than just the general um, population. Uh, how does your financial situation play a role in your stress le levels? They always say money doesn't buy happiness, but um, money can also probably um, not stress you out in certain situations. So can you tell me about what a financial situation does with this sort of condition? Well, I think we would all agree that money helps us to access resources. And if overwhelming demands um, stress resources, you can see where money can play such an important role in helping you not, so to speak, overwhelm yourself. So there were studies documenting that people with lower incomes tended to have, for example, higher rates of uh, depression and anxiety, um, a study coming out of uh, Brown, actually. What is the impact of prolonged burnout if you're going through this over and over again? Well, you, you can imagine starting to feel a loss of sense of purpose, uh, starting to feel like, you know, what, what really is the point of this? Um, feeling really disconnected. It's, it's interesting because it was the American Medical Association, Mayo Clinic and Stanford that showed that from 2011 to 2021, there was actually an increase in the rate of, in particular, physician burnout, uh, where in 2011 it was 45.5 percent, but by 2021 it was up to 62.8 percent. So it it it's it's a situation that really needs um, us to really address it in a meaningful uh, way. And I mean, some companies out there really have tried to address it by offering programs like EAP programs, more flexible work scheduling. They've been encouraging workers to take care of their mental health. The big question here is, is that strategy enough and what more needs to be done? Kudos to companies like um, the Calm app. Um, as well as, for example, Lyra, that is leveraging the power of technology to bring, um, for example, mental health solutions to the workforce. Because sometimes, even if the workforce has um, the insurance, they actually have trouble getting away. And so kudos uh, to them to actually leveraging uh, technology to try to make it more available. Um, companies are going to have to identify, for example, um, executives that are going to make well-being programs a priority and make that their focus so that uh, systemic solutions throughout the organization can be more available. Um, but it, it's something that the American uh, political system, economic system, and innovative spirit is going to, they're all going to have to come together in order to address burnout at the root. So you're saying that there should be leaders that prioritize these well-being programs. What should be in a program like this? Well, the, the focus needs to be on, hey, what, what are the vital areas of a person's life? Um, this is where I'm very proud of the work of myself and my collaborator, Dr. Cerny Wallazonia, in identifying, expanding on the biopsychosocial model to identify 
hey, what are a person's emotional vitals? Um, so there are actually seven vital areas of a person's life. So imagine juggling those vitals and not even being aware of them because you don't know what the seven vitals are. So, so we're very proud of what we've done and featured on the, the website killingburnout.com. Um, but while we're waiting on the, the government to intervene and, and put systems in place, we ourselves have to do what we can um, to protect our mental health. And let's say you feel like you're getting burnt out. You, you know that it's happening. What can you do uh, to stop it? You have to give yourself permission to take time to heal. You, you've got to give yourself that permission to, whether it's accessing mental health resources, whether it's taking time for you. Um, so often people have vacation time, they, they don't even feel like accessing sometimes because they're so overwhelmed. And you can't wait for, for, for that, that permission per se. Sometimes you have to access those resources available to give yourself permission to get that, that healing because some time away can, can at times be very restorative. And I feel like a lot of employees out there may not necessarily take advantage of those, those benefits like the time off because they don't want to be seen as lazy or not hardworking. Um, and, you know, what do you, what do you say about normalizing this, this healing aspect when it comes to our mental health in the workplace? The, the studies have documented that it's not a resilience deficit that's causing burnout. It's, it's not that the, we're weak people, we're actually very strong people. But as you look at some of the systemic issues, um, the overwhelm, the inadequate resources, um, eight out of 10 healthcare workers, for example, uh, have, in, have documented that they endured physical or verbal violence, actually. Um, so it, it's not that, the, that we're weak people. Um, it, it's, it's that there are some systemic issues that need to be addressed. So, so imagine just when healthcare workers really should be celebrated, they're actually at times getting abused, assaulted, and under-resourced. Wow. Well, thank you for, you know, saying that. I think there are a lot of workers out there who need to hear that they are, you know, um, working hard. They're not lazy. And this is just uh, a systemic issue at some point. All right, Dr. White, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for this time to share such an awesome spotlight on this issue, Irene. Absolutely. All the best.